Hey y'all cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to the shop for a special quarantine edition rocket build video. On today's video I'm going to talk to you about my Wildman Punisher 3 and how it accomplishes dual deploy in a slightly different manner than we've seen in some other rockets. Just like the Drago 4, the Punisher 3 is an all fiberglass rocket. It features a 54mm motor mount and it's only 3 inches in diameter. So it's not quite minimum diameter, but it's going to be very high performance. So to uh, help keep the size small on the Punisher to get the most performance out of it, Wildman has uh, deleted the payload tube. You'll notice that there is a vent band, a coupler, and the nose cone, but no payload tube. So how do we make uh, dual deploy out of this? I'm going to show you how. This is the entire upper section of the Punisher 3. As you can see, we have a coupler that's going to work as our avionics bay. We have a vent band that will be glued on, and we have the nose cone as well. Now the tip of the nose cone is metal right here, and there's a, an eye bolt that threads right into it. And then we have these beautiful uh, stepped fiberglass uh, bulkheads that will go on the avionics bay as well. Now as you can see, there's no payload tube. It's just a hollow nose cone. So how this works is the avionics bay goes right into the nose cone, and the, the recovery harness and parachute are all going to fit inside this hollow nose cone. And when there's no payload tube, this is known as head-end dual deploy because the end of the avionics bay is going to be just the nose cone. The first thing that we want to do when setting up the avionics bay for head-end dual deploy is figure out where we're going to set the vent band on. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. One way is just to take your avionics bay, put it as far into the nose cone as you can, and mark the line there. Now, I want to show you when you do this, don't mark the line with just the avionics tube here. Because when it's done, you're going to have the lid on. So here's the mark for how far the uh, tube goes in without the lid. Once you install the lid, push it in as far as it'll go. See how much of a difference there is so the vent band wouldn't line up. So if you want to put the avionics bay as far into the nose cone as you can, make absolutely sure that you have your lid on and then you'll get a, an accurate uh, location for where to put the vent band. At that point, you can set the vent band on like this, run tape around the other side, and then you can pull the whole thing out and then glue the vent band on. Now that's one way to do it. So you can see where my mark is right now. Just visualizing, if I put the avionics tube inside the nose cone, here's where the, uh, where the bulkhead is. Add a little bit of space for your charges, then you've got this much space to fit your rec recovery harness and your parachute inside. So it's not really a whole lot. So what I'm going to do is have a look at my project and see what I can do to maximize the area inside the nose cone for my parachute. When building in high power rocketry, it's important to do as much planning as you can during the build. Now what I'm going to do in this build is plan for A, the equipment that I'm planning on using with the rocket, and B, worst case as far as fitment of all the equipment. This is an Aerotech 54-1706 motor case. This is the case that I've been using in my Wildman Drago with my K2050 motors, and I've also flown it on my 5.5 inch Black Brant 2 with a K1103 propellant X motor. This is a great case. I love it very much, and I actually just picked up a second case because I, I like this size so much. So this is what I feel I'm going to do most of my high performance flying with the, uh, with the uh, Punisher 3. So what I'm doing now is visualizing all of the components that are going to go into the rocket. I don't have my uh, drogue chute or my recovery harness for the drogue section right now, but I'm only planning on using a 12-inch drogue chute, and the recovery harness is going to be relatively thin tubular Kevlar. So I'm not really planning on that taking up much space. What is going to take up the space is the motor, the avionics bay, which will go to about here, and I also want to use my favorite GPS, which is the MissileWorks T3, inside this case here with a quick link for easy attachment. So let's have a look right now. You can see that uh, even with some space for the charges, I have my motor here, I've got the GPS inside as well, and I've got plenty of room to fit the parachute and harness. Now this vent band is set up with all of the shoulder going into the, no into the nose cone that I figured out earlier. What I would love to do is decrease the amount of shoulder going into the nose cone so I can make more room for the parachute in there. So if I take my measurement here and have it 
this is half as much shoulder as I had originally, I'd like to visualize and see if my GPS will still fit. And it looks like it will. Now that's good news with the 1706 case. However, the Punisher is designed to fit up to a 54-2800 case, which is 9 inches longer than the 1706 case. Now I can see, if I put my ruler 9 inches from the end of my current case, there's no room for the GPS. However, even if I had the vent band back to fit all the way into the nose cone about here, there'd still be no room for the GPS. So in my opinion, it doesn't really matter if the, uh, um, if the avionics bay goes all the way into the nose cone or if it goes a couple more inches into the booster tube. So the plan is to have the avionics bay go a couple more inches into the booster tube. Okay, I have a, a location for the vent band that I'm happy with. As you can see, lining it up with the nose cone, the coupler will go in about that far instead of about that far, and so that'll save a substantial amount of room inside the nose cone because it's down where the nose cone is the widest, so there will be a lot more volume in there for fitting my parachute. So what I need to do is glue the vent band on, and that's uh, easier said than done because you can see once, once I put the vent band on, there's actually a little bit of play on here, and I want to make sure that the uh, vent band sits square to the coupler. So to do this, what I could do is put the coupler into the nose cone and then set the vent band in, but with the coupler only so far into the nose cone, the nose cone has some play as well. So what you want to do is you want to have more shoulder going into the stabilizing body. In this case, I'm going to put the coupler inside the body tube. So with only a little bit going in, you can see there's quite a bit of play. Once it goes where it's going to be in its final position here, there's a bit less play. So it'll be easier to square up the vent band. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the vent band here up against the fuselage, not the fuselage, the body tube, and I'm going to put my mark here right where the vent band is, and I'm going to run a mark around it, and then uh, we'll pull it all off and put some tape around as well. Okay, so I've got a band of tape around the forward end of the uh, coupler tube here. And I've made a mark on the vent band itself to make sure I keep putting it in on the same orientation. Line that mark up with the body tube. Everything fits nice and square. So pulling that out, what I've done is I've made a mark along the aft end of the gluing area, and this shows me where to sand for the best epoxy adhesion. Alright, so you can see how much fiberglass of dust I've made by sanding the uh, vent band area. Here I've uh, poured some uh, isopropyl alcohol on the paper towel here. I'm just going to clean up all of that dust, get that out of there, and that'll make for a really strong epoxy joint. Now I've already sanded the inside of the vent band as well, so both edges of the uh, fiberglass are, are sanded. Okay, I've mixed up some epoxy uh, to glue the vent band onto the avionics bay. Now for most of my uh, large rocket building I like to use rocket epoxy. Uh, but for gluing on the vent band I like to use just regular uh, Hobby Shop Bob Smith 30 minute epoxy. The reason for that is it's a little bit thinner than rocket epoxy. Now during my uh, Drago build series I uh, heated up the epoxy to make it a little bit thinner to help uh, it uh, seep in the joint between the vent band and the avionics bay. This time, I'm just going to splash a little bit of my rubbing alcohol into the epoxy. And that's going to thin it out really, really well. And so I'll start applying the epoxy to the vent band area. And we'll get this uh, vent band glued on. With the rubbing alcohol mixed in with the epoxy, the epoxy can take longer to set up. So I've set the avionics bay and the vent band over, uh, aside overnight to allow that all to cure. So with it all cured, you can pick it back up and check the fit on the booster section. Now you just turn the booster section around, see if there's any gaps or anything like that that you're not happy with. Now's the time to do any sanding to make that fit just perfect. And all the while you want to keep your marks lined up so that your uh, avionics bay is always in the same position. 
Now that I'm satisfied with the fit of the vent band onto the booster section, I'm going to drill and install the shear pin that I'm going to use uh, between the booster section and the avionics bay. Now, that's something that you don't necessarily have to do. Uh, you can use friction fit uh, for this section. However, what I found is uh, when you're using tape uh, to get the perfect fit uh, for the avionics bay, that fit can vary sometimes. And so the charge that you're using may or may not be adequate to provide a separation. And when you use a shear pin, that takes away the variability of how much force it takes to separate the upper section. So a number two shear pin is approximately uh, 30 pounds worth of shear force to hold this section on. And that's uh, plenty for this size of a rocket. So I'm just going to use a single shear pin. And I like to do my single shear pin on the right side of the rocket. That's just a personal preference. You can pretty much put it wherever you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of paper here and find exactly 90 degrees off of the back side of the rocket, which is where my mark is. There, with my uh, piece of paper folded into four sections, I'll line the original mark back up here. Bring the paper back on, rotate the rocket, and right here on that first fold, that's 90 degrees off of the back side of the rocket. Now I'll just extend that line out and measure how far back to drill the hole. Okay, so this, uh, the coupler section is uh, 4 and 3 eighths inches long, and so I want the shear pin near the bottom part of the uh, uh, coupler. So I'll, I'll put it at four and one eighth inches down from where the uh, the coupler section meets. So four and one eighth inches. Is right there. So I'll get my drill out and we'll drill the hole. Okay with the avionics bay back on and lined up properly I'm just gonna use some tape here to hold it nice and snug against the booster tube. That'll also help it keep it aligned while I'm drilling the hole. So here's my mark for my hole. I'm just going to go nice and easy. And then here's my 256 tap. Okay, so here's my number two shear pin. I'm going to put that into the hole right now. There we go, that snugs down real nice. Now I can remove the tape. And my avionics bay is nice and secure now. With the avionics bay in place, now I can uh, remove all the tape here and we'll get to work on fitting the nose cone. Okay, now with the shoulder exposed, it's time to fit the nose cone on. Feels like this. And now most of us know from our, our rocketry activities that typically you want at least one caliber of free shoulder uh, going into the nose cone or if it's uh, attached to the nose cone, one caliber going into the body tube. Obviously we don't have that right now. What we have is uh, well under one, uh, well under probably a half caliber. So what we're going to do is we're going to use three shear pins to stabilize the nose cone while it's on the uh, on the avionics bay here, and that's 90 pounds worth of force holding the nose cone on, which is going to be uh, plenty to keep it nice and stable during flight. All right, time to get the uh, shear pin set on the nose cone here. Here's the line that I have that goes on the back side of the rocket, so I don't want a shear pin uh, right here because that'll interfere with the rail. So I've uh, spaced out three different holes for doing the shear pins. And like I said, there's going to be uh, three shear pins on this nose cone here. I did uh, two shear pins a half inch up, this one, and then this one, and then on the, the front side of the rocket, the shear pin hole is going to be about a sixteenth of an inch further up. And that way it's uh, easy enough to rotate the nose cone around on the front side to find the one hole that lines up. And then once I do that shear pin, I'll know that the other two shear pins 
uh, are in the correct position. It'll be easy enough to put the screws in there. So what I'm going to do now is just set this uh, nose cone vertically on the table, add a little bit more masking tape to make sure that the nose cone is nice and tight against the vent band, and drill my holes. Okay, there's the last shear pin installed. Okay, last thing to do in setting up the head and dual deploy here is to uh, drill the vent holes on the vent band and then I can uh, get to work on installing avionics. What I'm going to do is uh, drill the holes out to 5 30 seconds of an inch and uh, to do that I drilled some pilot holes here and I'm going to use a step bit for drilling out to the final size. I find the step bit here does a really nice job of enlarging holes without uh, risking uh, having a large drill bit catching on the fiberglass. So you can see that a technique that I use is I find the proper diameter on the back of the uh, step bit here and then I use a sharpie to uh, color that that diameter uh, nice and black. So when I'm drilling I can just put the step bit in and drill until the black part goes into the hole that I know it's the proper diameter. So I'm going to get to work on that now. All of the shear pins have been drilled and installed and all the vent holes have been drilled out to final size. So that completes the setup for the head-end dual deploy on the Punisher 3 rocket. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this rocket painted, put together, and looking forward to when we can all go flying again. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, build on, and I'll see you on the next one.